in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, the one that made the heaven and the earth, the one that said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy lady, I will give you rest. Father, we come to receive your rest this hour. Your word say, There remain there for rest to the people of God. Father, we receive your rest. Rest that you promise your people that faithfully serve you, that obey you, that do your will. Father, as we look into your word this our Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, to come and teach us and make us understand it and re to retain it so that in the end, the blessing and the promise you have for us will not elude us in Jesus' name. Your word say, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in but if we confess our sin you are faithful you are just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness for i come to do your will may your will be justified in our time in our life in jesus name Amen. for we have no parts of our own some trust in chairs some trust in horses some trust in talisman some even trust in their own money or their own country but we trust in jehovah god because we, we trust and stand in you, Lord, we are standing there falling. Father, preserve us and deliver us from all that is going on around the world today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today we are going to be studying First Kings chapter 7 from verses 1 to 51. And our topic is beauty God's temple. Beauty God's temple. Beauty God's temple. When you hear the word temple, what comes to your mind? When you hear the word temple, church may come to your mind. A physical beautiful beauty may come to your mind. But those are the representation of the actual temple. See, right now, because of the coronavirus, and you see that it's going on around the whole world. The church is not able to meet in the physical temple. But the church of Jesus Christ is very much alive and active. We have more churches right now than we have ever had in the history of the world. Because I suppose and I, I believe that most families are not church in their own home. That is the true church of Jesus Christ. So he said, I will build my church. And the gate of hell, the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. You and I, we are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. So that's why when you put your physical church first, above God, you're not actually serving the Lord. But you have to put your temple, which is the body of God, which is the church of Jesus Christ, to make sure you honor that temple by doing God's will. If Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, I will build it in three days. But the Pharisees did not understand what Jesus was saying. To them it was a blasphemy. And they thought that he was saying erroneous thing. And for that reason, they were plotting to kill him. And on the third day, after the temple was destroyed, he rose again. Brothers and sisters, that is the hope we have today. There are so many things that is going on. I listen to the news every day. And this morning I was listening to the news with some nurses and doctors who are treating COVID patients died. And the question there is not about death. But it's how we live our life. Because this world is not our home. We are a pilgrimage. We are on a vacation or we are in the university. But where we are going to spend our life, because when we stand before God, the first question is going to ask us, how did you spend the life I gave to you? What did you do with it? Did you please me? Will you use the best material I gave to you to maintain and to honor the temple and to honor my life and to glorify me and to let people know that you are truly the temple of God? That's what Jesus Christ is looking for today. And that's what he's going to ask us. God is never going to ask us how many degrees you have. They are good in themselves. I have no problem with that one. As most of you are aware of, I have a graduate degree. And I'm constantly studying. And 
that's not the most important thing. When it comes to money, money is not the first thing because we're going to leave it behind. I don't care how much money you have in the bank. I don't know if you guys know Roy Moore. He died this morning. He's a magician that popularized playing with the animal. Some few years ago, he was attacked by the lion and he almost died. But this man, he died of COVID-19. But the question there is, is people remember him because he was able to play with the animal. He was 76 years old. But what are people going to remember you for tomorrow? Brothers and sisters, that's a challenge facing us today. But Solomon was aware of the assignment given to him by his father. And he was fully dedicated to fulfilling that task before him with the best of the best. I love this Bible, and especially this passage as I read it. Solomon put all his effort, all his resources, all his strength to build the temple of God, a physical temple. Are you building the temple of God in your life? You know, you and I were made with intricacies. I was looking at my little boy's uh, assignment from uh, the high school. They're talking about so many body parts, anatomy and physiology. He's taking the class. And I was looking at the assignment because he's homeschooled right now. I said, this is very wonderful. And your body is describing so many body parts. And they had to give me the assignment. And I had to spy on it and go to YouTube and put it there. I'm so much amazed. I say, wow, God is awesome. Our body is made with precision, with perfection, with the best of the best. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, First Kings chapter 7 says, Solomon also built a palace for himself. And it took him 13 years to complete the construction. Because you are working for God doesn't mean you should not have your own house. Or you should not have your own clothes to wear. Or you should not eat. God never believed that one. Or neither does God subscribe to that. There are some people, because they are Christian, you know what they do? They look very wretched. They look very poor. They look very dirty. Because, oh, I'm going to church. I'm serving the Lord. If you can put on the best clothes, there's nothing wrong with it. If you can drive a very nice car, there's nothing wrong with it. But don't let the car or the house or the education be your main focus. Your main focus is to, be to use what you have to glorify God's name. To help your fellow human being. That's what is the most important thing. We are going to see here today. How this guy put the best of the best into building this temple. One of Solomon's building was called the Palace of the Forest of Lebanon. Why will he name it? You know, names is historical or is affiliation. Or it has a significant importance to you before you give a name. Here is the forest of the Lebanon. Why we did why we Solomon name such a place? Remember Haram? Remember those trees from Lebanon? Remember those cedars? Those cypress? Those, ty- those cypress trees? They are from Lebanon. So he's honoring their palace to honor the contribution of the Lebanese forest and it was 150 feet long can you imagine it you know most of the plot where we build a house here in the United States is not up to 50 feet long but here is 150 feet that's a very large land that is just the building itself it's not the land it was 75 feet wide can you see it? You can measure your own uh, plot where you have your own land. You just go, oh, it's a little spot. It's not even big. Maybe 25 feet or sometimes 30 feet. Sometimes 50 feet if it's big. That's half a plot. One plot is 100 by 100. But that's not where the guy built the land. But that's just the building itself. It has a massive land. The building is 45 feet high. Can you see it? If you look at your building, if it's a very high story building, 
might be might be 20 feet but this guy is having 45 feet into the air can you imagine that that was the ancient days there were three there were four rows of cedar pillars this guy have cedar they are top quality material and gray cedar beams rested on the pillars the hall had a cedar roof above the beams on the cedars pillar were 45 side room can you see it has 45 rooms in a row arranged in three tiers of 15 each 45 divided by 15 and it has these rooms arranged in rows this guy is building a massive palace on this side of the long hall were three rows of windows facing each other and all the doors way and door posts had rectangular frames and were arranged in set of three facing each other so you know when you build houses why do people allow this one because in those days because there, there may not be air condition we cannot say i don't think there was air condition in the ancient days because of cross ventilation he allowed this row so it will open the window the air can circulate and cool the room down and it let they they, they, are, they are facing each other so there's cross ventilation those are the things that are lacking here today in this modern era these houses we are building there's no crown ventilation and that's why most of the houses are very hot and they also have mold where there's no crown ventilation but if you're able to have a very beautiful land like if you have acre one acre or two acre of land and you build a house there you can open your window and the air can circulate and it's very refreshing so this guy chose this plot of land this is for his own palace because he's going to have so many people working for him and living with him and serving him but i think it was last week i was watching this uh, the, the 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 roman catholic uh, uh, the room the the the, the papacy i was watching uh, the, the the audio was about two or three hours long how many people serve the pope how it's being arranged it's a very complex system how they build this building and they started how they started building them even 2000 years ago they were showing how they started building the first building it's very amazing i say wow and these buildings are so meticulous they have underground they have everything they, it's a whole city it, of course uh, the, the 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 college is a country but the way they built this city it, very, it was very wonderful i say this is a lot of money to maintain there are almost 3,000 workers that are maintaining that building and doing everything. So that's a lot and lot of money. Can you imagine you pay 3,000 workers in a month even if it's $1,000 per worker? That's a lot of money. So they have everything. Everything you can think of. They have their own farm. They have their own garden. They have their everything. Their own construction. Their clinic crew. Everything they need. They don't, they don't use outsider. Everything is self contained and self able to fulfill when i look at that i say can you imagine how heaven will be and let us look at our body you know your body has so many parts what we are just looking at in that anatomy and physiology i was telling you that my little boy was taking is we are talking we are looking at the kidney we are looking at the liver and the testicles and some other area and as i was looking at them in a in a in youtube video these people started explaining how complex this small little that look insignificant it is to your body to your reproduction to your sustain of life even to your pleasure and to your happiness and to your to your to your you having a happy life and this small little thing can ward off diseases and they can also make you to die if you don't they don't do what they're supposed to do the kidney is very 
little but it's very very effective it transports all the food out of it all the bad thing out of your body and it allows you to urinate it did so many things amazing and i look at that and i say our god is so awesome he took at the liver it looks very small but it performs a very important function everything that god created i say wow these kids are learning this in high school what is going to happen if they go to university i continue with this same course i say these kids are way, way ahead of us so what am i trying to say that god created you in a perfect way but for you to be able to live that perfect way look at your body as god's temple you have to maintain it you know you can abuse your body which is the temple of god god give us 24 hours god does not want us to work 24 hours why not god does not work 24 hours he gave us a pattern on how we are to live our lives if we follow that pattern we will live long we can fulfill our day that god gave to our genitive verse 6 verse 20 sorry genitive chapter 6 verse 3 120 years what god gave to us to live I, I happen to be close to great men of God, what you may call the pillars of faith in today. And I, I watch them carefully. You know, when we're having a large crowd, they want to go and sleep between 4 and 6, or between 3 and 5 or 6. Every day, it doesn't matter how many people line up, they have to go and take siesta. And I watch them today, they are still 90 something years old, they are still ministering. Whereas some young pastors, which people so sent to me, are dying in a long, a high number. Because they think I have to do all night prayer. I have to fast all day. I shouldn't drink water. Jesus fasted for 40 days. If they are married, they don't touch their wives. Their wives don't touch them. Oh, they think they are living a holy life. But they are short socketing their lives. Because everything that is in my body. Is created for a purpose and if it's not used they will die according to physics everything left to everything left to itself will decay if you don't use it you lose it so everything that god created in us is very, very important even if we don't serve god we're going to lose god or we lose our lives that's why the bible says, if you give your life to me you're going to live a happy life he that value his life, want to lose it because you are using it for God, you actually gain it. But the person that just remain dormant, he don't want to do anything, he's actually losing his life. May God help us. Solomon built these houses in a very well designed manner. I believe it's a reflection of God's own creation or God's own pattern because Solomon was a very wise man, which I believe we have great spiritual insight. Solomon also built the hall of pillars which was 75 feet long and 45 feet wide. There was a porch in front along with a canopy supported by pillars. He have a second building that he built another one there. And Solomon also built three tr throne rooms known as the Hall of Justice. This is a separate building again where he sat to hear legal matters. It was panel with cedars from floor to ceiling. Solomon's living quarters were surrounded. Solomon's living quarters surrounded a courtyard behind this hall. And they were constructed the same way. He also built similar living quarters for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had married. He had another quarter, again, another living room for the wife, especially. Pharaoh's daughter, because Pharaoh was a very powerful king. Solomon married the wife or the daughter and is able to also give that lady, you know, who you marry or the family you come from can also reflect in you when you marry. So he built a very nice, beautiful building for the wife. So Solomon built so many buildings. Each of these buildings has so many things. You know, you have your brain, you have your eyes, you have your ear. You have your nose, you have your different part, even your eyes lead. As you begin to study all these detailed part of human body, which they call anatomy and physiology, you're going to find there are so many things that are so amazing. 
I say, oh my God, we take this thing for granted. Every part of your body that God has created, therefore a function. So this building that Solomon was building, there is a function for each of the building. He didn't just build them out of randomness. He built them with a specific purpose and for a specific use. May God help us in Jesus' name. Solomon also built the throne room known as the Hall of Justice. That is another area like a court where he had to sit to hear legal matters. It was panel with cedar from floor to ceiling. A Solomon living quarters surrounded a courtyard behind this hall. He has a he has his own house behind that building. They were constructed the same way. He also built similar living quarters. That means another quarter of almost 75 feet for this daughter of Pharaoh. From foundation to eaves, all beauty were built from huge blocks of high quality stone. So this guy is not sparing any material. Do you know ability for you to breed is a very very complex system. If you begin to analyze your breeding pattern or even your drinking water or your food, they call them trachea or different names in the medical, an ability for you to breed is complex. <clears throat> and when that function is not there, a man's life can be cut off within a short period. So God allows us to breed our lungs. You hear our lungs. They say your lung is a flame. The person cannot breathe. They have to use oxygen or ventilator for you to breathe. But God did all this thing. And it's amazing how our body is made. Every part is so well designed. So Solomon used the best of the best for his house. Cut with saws and trim to exact measure all side. Some of the huge foundation stones were 15 feet long and some were 12 feet long. The block of high quality stone used in the wall were cut to measure and cedar beams were also used. The wall of the great courtyard were built so that there was one layer of the cedar beam between every three layers of finished stones just like the walls of the inner courtyard of the lost temple with its entry room wow this guy is amazing this was Solomon's own beauty for him his workers his wives and children and the other palace official now from verse 13 is switching to let us know that he has not forgotten one particular thing the temple of god the temple of god is not fully finished yet it's like their parallel building is building the temple of god at the same time building his own house what lesson do we learn from there can you just think for a moment meaning you can be doing the work of God as you be doing taking care of yourself. You know, you guys hear me talk about Maurice all the time. <clears throat> I was trained by him. I have a lot of his training material, a lot of his books. And I went to a lot of his classes. I sat down with him on face-to-face, -face, teaching about spiritual warfare. But you find that while you are doing God's work, does not mean you cannot take care of your body. Does not mean you cannot take care of your wife or your children or even your own house. So your body is the temple of God. And Solomon was building the temple of God at the same time. He was also building his own temple. So the, the, the parallel building or simultaneous building is telling us something very important. You know, one thing about the Bible, most people read it and they misconstrue it. I read a lot of articles people post into WhatsApp and people send to me every day. I have a lot of, sometimes within an hour, I can get up to 20. I try to glance through what people are saying or what they are saying to me. If it's a video, I want to hear what they are saying. And sometimes I listen to what they are saying. I say, this people have to be very careful what they hear because most of them are erroneous. Some people are just preaching. They don't know what they're talking about. 
Bible is a historical book of a people's culture in their relationship to God. Bible is not just all spiritual. This building is talking about the temple of God and temple of Solomon. But it's indirect spiritual implication or spiritual comparison to our own physical temple body. We should not say where well, Solomon just be the temple. That was not true temple. It was just figurative. That is irony. That is not true. This was the real temple. All these things we are seeing here, Tiba, Cedar, Stone, Gemstone, Gold, these are true physical material. So people will explain and say, oh, this is not a true temple. It just tells us about a physical body. I say, no, this was a true temple. So don't try to spiritualize everything. And because of that reason, a lot of people are having problem. When you look at a book of a, a a book in proverb he said enjoy the wealth of your youth oh I mean enjoy jesus christ don't touch your wife or don't touch your husband that's not true so may god help us in jesus name so when solomon built his own house to a certain level he switched back to the temple verse 13 of chapter 7 king solomon then asked for a man named horam to come from tyre he was half Israelite. His mother was a widow from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father had been a craftsman in bronze from Tyre. Horan was extremely skillful and talented in any work in bronze, and he had to do all the mental work for King Solomon. What are we learning here? Meaning, look for the best somebody if you cannot do it. Whatever you are doing, don't do it haphazard. You know that people want to do everything. They want, for, they want to feed their own plumber. They want to be their own plumber. They want to be their own capita. They want to be their own uh, uh, tailor. They want to be their own mechanic. They want to be everything. That's not me. That's not me. Every now and then, I tell my wife, I say, you know what I want? Let me tell you something. I can't be everything. I am not going to be everything. I will never be everything. I just want to specialize in one area. And be the best. I spend time to read my Bible and read and read. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Don't let anybody deceive you and tell you Bible is a spiritual book. Don't read it. It's really meant for the pastor or for the priest. No. When you begin to read this Bible, God begins to talk to you. God can talk to you also. God doesn't have grandchildren. God doesn't have great grandchildren. We are all children of God. Your children, my children, are also children of God. We are children of God. But if you run away from God by not reading the Bible, God is never going to talk to you. God can begin to sp speak to you, even about the smallest thing. You can't believe it. Somebody was coming to tell me something. I told my wife, I said, this is what is going to happen. This person will come here and tell me this thing. God already showed it to me way, way. I said, but I'm not going to ask this person the question. I'm just going to realize. When the time comes, it's coming to be. And one day the person actually came and said, Hey, dad, or oh, social person, uh, I want to do this thing. I said, I already know. I said, I was already aware. What? They were looking at me like, How do you know? I didn't tell you. You don't have to tell me. Everything is spiritual. We live in the spiritual world. That's why I have to be very careful. Before anybody dies physically, you first of all die in the spiritual world. You don't always tell us the spiritual control the physical. That's why I'll be close to God. God is His spirit. And they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and word and in truth. So once you are close to God in the spiritual, God begins to show you things before they happen. Sometimes you have a dream. Somebody says, I just had a dream and it didn't come to pass. Oh, I thought it was just another dream. Oh, not another dream. God is communicating to you. And when you begin to read more about spiritual book, it tells you how the dreams happen. When you go to sleep in the night, they are what they call REM. And your, your dream is broken into modo, like different sessions. It's like you are driving a car. When you reach a certain point, it's like... <sighs> you breathe down. It's usually about 90 minutes. <clears throat> when you breathe down, first REM, second REM, third REM. That's about four hours, 
50 minutes or 4 or 30 minutes then your body now is like dead you're completely dead paralyzed somebody can actually carry you from the bed and put you down you will not even feel nothing and that's why they used to that's how they used to do surgery in the old days because that time when you get to that room and your eyes will be moving like it will be blink, your eyes will be, will be rapid uh, moving very fast if somebody is watching you that's when you actually begin to go into a deep sleep and REM and you have begin to dream God begin to talk to you because your physical body is not taking over your spiritual body you are now completely out of the physical realm God begin to show you things and you say I had that dream oh God talked to me it could be about a business God can talk to you about anything could be about a husband could be about a wife could be about anything even about the smallest thing when you begin to call to God but how will God talk to you what may God to be talking to you? <coughs> Take your Bible, read it very well. Don't try to understand it, first of all. Some people hear me say, Oh, I don't believe in that. You don't have to believe in it. I'm telling you what worked for me. God speaks to me about even the small little thing. Small little thing. One time I was living in Lagos and I had these three bedrooms apartment and there were these rats this morning tiny rat they were running everywhere <coughs> and I didn't feel comfortable with this rat I don't know where they were coming from I pray say God if this rat are human rat let them live but if they are different rat I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn them three days later I will fight this rat they were dead I don't have rat poison then one of a guy from my village, I'm very liberal, very open. I'm not afraid of people to come and visit me. I'm not the type of person say, so oh, don't come and visit me because you're a witch. I don't believe in that. So this this is our brother who worked for a radio station, Nigeria Radio Corporation. And he said, my childhood friend, we are, although I'm older than him, but we are from the same village. And uh, he came to visit me with his wife spent some days with me. We are the same in Lagos. He lived in one part of the city. I'm in another part. Say, Lagos is a, it's a state. It's a big place. Even though everything looks small together, but it's a state. So he came to visit me. He spent about a week or two with me. He would go from my house to work and come back and we stay and eat and do everything. We pray through Bible study. One day we were praying. When we finished praying, I told him, I said, Brother, let me warn you about something. You may not know who I am. We are from the same village. I said, whenever we finish praying, don't touch the front door for no reason. The wife was sitting down there. I said, if you touch it, you die, you are dying for yourself. You are dying for disobedient. I said, don't touch the front door, please. Because there's tendency that when you finish praying, somebody may want to go and open the front door and say, I want to go. I said, we don't open the door until we have finished praying in the morning. If we want to go to work, we wake up very early, 5 o'clock, we do Bible study. He said, okay. In the night, people were making noise. And he wanted to go and open the front door. He says, it's a visitor coming to visit me. He wanted to see what was outside. He said he saw a man with a huge sword. And the man was about to strike him with that. He said, oh my God. He said, brother, I wasn't sleeping. I actually touched the door. He said, I'm sorry. He said, I saw this huge guy. He almost killed me. He said, I quickly had to back away. I said, brother, why do you disobey God? Why are you so stubborn? Why are you disobeying God? Remember what Paul, what Peter told Ananias? The money you have is yours. When you want to give it to God, it was your own decision. Why does the Holy why do you lie to the Holy Spirit? I said, brother, be very careful. I told you, don't touch this door. He said, I'm sorry, brother. I was hearing the noise. I said, if you hear the noise, let them be making their own noise, whatever is going on. It was armed robber that was attacking other neighbors. My house will never be attacked by armed robber because I say, when I finish, when we pray, and I say, I release the angel of God from heaven with the sword and the flame of the Holy Spirit. They are guarding my door. He said, you are, you are right, brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I say, I apologize to God. I say, would I be dead? I told you, I warn you. I warn everybody. So you have to be very careful because we live in the spiritual world. 
when you are on the side of God, God can use you tremendously. God can do so many things through you. Your temple is what God walked through. That's your body. So that's why whatever you are doing for God, don't cheat yourself by doing haphazard. You know, there's one person that's saying, part-time lover. God doesn't want part-time love. He wants full-time love. You have to be 100% committed to God. God cannot use you. Read your Bible like you're reading your novel. So you put a fast reader. Take that Bible and read it within one week. Continue again. Read it again. Continue to read it. By the time you read it three or four times, you will go to sleep. God will start talking to you. We start showing you things. And if you go to work, somebody wants to tell you something. You already know what they are going to tell you. And when people are talking, you can literally hear their voice far away. Say, what? I hope this is not voodoo. I'm not giving you anything to touch or to eat or to do anything. I'm just telling you to read the Bible. It's public. It's a public domain. I'm not giving. I'm not, I don't have anything to say to you. I'm only just telling you spiritual truth that will be a blessing to me. So Solomon is aware of spiritual truth because he was raised by his father, and he was well tutored, and for that reason, he gave his all to God. That's what happened to the prophet of old. That when people are talking to them, the man said, well, "My servant Elisha." He said, oh, they surrounded us, they, they are Syrian soldiers. They, they, they surround the whole building, they want to kill us. The man said, what is wrong with you? Why are you so frightened? He said, master, we are in trouble. The man said, you are in trouble, I am not in trouble. He said, what? Master, I saw them outside, there are a lot of things surrounding our building. We can't go. He said, God, open his eyes that he may see. And when the man saw the eyes, like I was watching a documentary about uh, Iran, 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 Iran war, Iraq war. President Jabush said, bring it on. And this guy will say, bring it on, bring it on. He said, I tell this to you, bring it on. Because he said, the one that for us are more than the one that against us. So when you understand the spiritual fact, you just relax, you laugh. When you meet people say, I'm a, I'm a servant of God, I'm a child of God, be careful. But for God to use you, your temple has to be pure, has to be clean. Well, God, it doesn't mean you're not going to buy a good commission. That's why we say, God, I may have sinned against you in many ways. By what I say, by what I do, or even fail to do. You can hear God's voice telling you, go and give that person water. Oh, no, I'm not going to give that person water. Why? He has a lot of cars. He should be able to afford water. <clears throat> but when you obey that small little thing, God will begin to use you. We begin to show you bigger one. When God wants to talk to you, first of all, say, what do you see? May he tell you, what do you see? He wants to make sure you are on the same page with him. One day, I was in my house, JJ, <coughs> just in my house. And the Lord said, go and give that uh, neighbor food. This guy have a beautiful car, very rich and everything. I don't see reason why we should have to come give this guy food. But anyway, as always, we comply. My wife prepared the food and gonna give it to them. And uh, the guy, one day I called the person and said, The Lord is telling me to talk to you. I said, Come over. The guy said, I was planning to commit suicide. I said, I don't know. It's not even a black person. I don't know what you are thinking. I said, But God is telling you, don't worry, everything will be alright. He said, I was just planning to commit suicide. And the wife said, I went to, we went to commit suicide because things are so rough for us. But they look rich physically. But they are not rich spiritually. So may God help us in Jesus' name. God can talk to you if you are close to him. God never talked to a stranger. You know that? He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Are you hearing God's voice? Don't be, see, don't be deceived by illusion. Mirad. Things that are not real, they are illusion. So, and you may think your job is your source. Your heart is your source. Your money is your source. The Bible says money has wings. They fly like an eagle towards it, towards heaven. I mean, everything you have can be taken away. You have to be very careful. So, give your temple 
which is the body of God, to worship God. Read your Bible to know God, pray to know God, love God, and make sure you eat healthy food. Don't come in to drink all this soda, all this alcohol. I know most of us don't drink, but in case you are drinking, stop. It's not good for your body. So, Horam cast two bronze pillars, verse 15, each 27 feet tall and 18 feet in circumference. Can you imagine it? Round, 18 feet. Wow, this is massive. For the top of the pillar, he has cast two capitals, each 7.5 feet tall. Each capital was decorated with seven set of lintel work and interwoven chains. He also encircled the lintel walls with two rolls of pomegranate to decorate the caterpillars, the, the capitals over the, the pillars. The, the capitals of the column inside the entry room were shaped like water lily and they were six feet tall. The capitals on the other pillar had 20 pomegranate in each in, in two rows around, col around them. Beside the rounded surface next to the latest wall, Haram set the pillars of the entrance of the temple, one towards the south and one towards the north. He also named one of the south Jekin and one on the north Boaz. You know the name <coughs> has Fidikans. Remember Boaz? Davis grandfather so the capital on the pillar were shaped like water lily and so the work of the pillars were was finished this guy is if you if you look at the detail work oh boy sometimes i look at this thing i was just telling myself i say well we live in a new era if i was having money maybe i would want to replicate the work they did here this is going to cost a lot and a lot of money and a lot of work because this guy is gifted. Every skill you have, I don't care whether you are a daughter, you are a carpenter, you are a painter, you are a big layer, you are a cook, you are a wife, it's a worship to God. You must know that God gave it to you. Even a mother, <clears throat> it's a gift from God. Some mothers are not good mothers. Some fathers are not good fathers. Some husbands are not good husbands. Oh, I don't. I want to take it back because I was talking to a brother the other time. I said there's no, there's no bad husband. There's no good husband. So if brother here this and go say, Pastor, what are you saying? Are you contradicting yourself? Meaning, when I say there's no good husband, there's no bad husband. Either. All husbands are good. It depends on the effort you put in there. There has to be communication. Don't hide your salary from your wife because your wife may think you have the money. You don't have it. Say, hey. This is my pay. I was talking to somebody that I said, when I came to this country, my wife had never worked one day. I took her to the bank. I had her name to the bank account. The bank manager called me and said, no, you can't do that. I said, yes, I know what I'm doing. I am a bank manager too. I said, I can't do, I can't do it. He said, no, no. You just married this woman. You're supposed to add everything you have. If he divorces you, you're going to, you're going to share the, your asset. I have a lot of money in the account. I said, don't worry, she's my wife. I marry her with everything. I give her a credit card. I say, this credit card, whenever you go to the store, I'm going to work. Anything you want to buy, give it to them. Anything you want to buy. This is your credit card. It's in your name. And the guy said, why are you, why are you giving her this thing? Women are very dangerous. This is a woman telling me about, be very careful with women. I say, I understand. So that's called love. And when I get my pay, I don't hide it. My wife knows how much, I, how much I was receiving. Or how much I'm receiving. Even today, I know how much I'm receiving now. I know how much money comes to my bank account every month. How much I'm getting. And I cannot spend one penny without letting her know I'm going to spend this money. Even if I want to give money to somebody, I have to say, this one I'm going to end. Every month, the money comes into the account now. Go there, take the tight away from there. I'm not telling you to tight. That is just what I do. So don't don't call me and quote me and say, Oh, what do you mean by tight? I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying what I do for myself. I pay to Divine Grace International Ministry. We provide it and we use it to help the poor and pay other ministry expenses. Because to run a ministry is very expensive. 
out of B we pay for. So you find that when you do God's will, you devote yourself to doing God's will. God will bless you. I don't care what anybody is telling you. Make sure the person you are giving the title is teaching the word of God. You have to do your Bible verse by verse, line by line. I have to hear the voice of God. And it has to make sure the money is used for the purpose of helping the poor, the orphan, the widow, and for doing God's work. Not to come buy big expensive car, buy expensive suit, buy expensive wristwatch. Those are vanity. Or even have a private jet because that is what is raining. God is not interested. But use it for God's glory. Where the people go. You see your brother suffering or your husband suffering. You give the money to church. You don't care about your husband if you want to die. You don't care about your wife if you want to die. Once you give your tithe, you have done God's will. No, you have not. You are sinning. Love your wife. Love your husband. Love your children. Love your father. Love your mother. Love your brothers and sisters. If you can assist them, assist them. They are part of God's own creation. Even your own fellow church member, you may see that person suffering. He doesn't have a job right now. Just buy some one bag of rice or some little 10 pound, 5 bag of rice and give it to the person after service. Say, brother, take this bag. Oh, thank you. God can talk to you, have the need. That's hearing God's voice and doing God's will. So that's part of the beauty of God's temple. God is not using you to beautify his own temple. Brothers and sisters, may God help us in Jesus' name. We are living in the last days. This world is not our home. It's not our home. It's not our home. We have to be very careful what we do. That's why we have the Divine Grace Ministry theme song. Be careful what you sow. Thy seed must surely grow. He who so go see to thee shall reap with joy tomorrow. Our second team song is God is building a people of power. God is building a people of praise that we pass through this land by His Spirit and we glorify His precious name. Build your church, Lord. Make us one, Lord, with your Son. Build your church, Lord. Make us one, Lord, in thy kingdom of your Son. God is building a church. The church is not a physical building. We don't have a physical building, say, called Divine Grace International Ministry Church. We have a physical building that is spiritual in nature by teaching the word of God to people all over the whole world. So, Heron cast a great round basin 15 feet across from rim to rim called the sea. It was seven and a half feet deep and 45 feet deep in circumference. It was cycle just below its rim by two rows of decorative gods there were about six gods per foot all the way around and they were cast as part of the basin the sea was placed on the base of 12 bronze ozen all facing each other can you see it these 12 ozen and there's a basin on top of them three face north Three face west, three face south, and three face east. And the sea rested on them. And the wall of the sea were about three inches thick. And in its rims fled out like a cup and resembled a water lily bosom. It could hold 1100 gallons of water. Oh my God! This is a huge swimming pool. 11,000 11, gallons of water. Can you see how much water is surrounding this, this building? And even the weight of this water. This is amazing. 
You know how much water your body carries every day? That's what that purify your blood. That's why you have to drink a lot of water. Horam also made 10 bronze water cart, each 6 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 4 feet, 4 and a half feet tall. This is a bigger one. 6 feet. Can you see a big swimming pool? 6 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 4 and a half feet deep. <coughs> they were constructed with side of the panel brace with crossbar so that it can hold the water and not break with the weight both the panel and the crossbar were decorated with the calf lions ozzy and cherubim above and below the lions and ozzy were red decorated each of these cut had four bronze wheels and bronze azo they were supporting they were supporting posts for the bronze basin at the corner of the card. These supports were decorative on each side with carving of red. The top of each card had a round, rounded a frame for the basin. It projected one and a half feet above the card top like a round pedestal and its opening was two and a half feet across. It was decorated on the outside with the carving of red the panel of the card were square not round under the panel were four ways that were connected to azo that had been cast as one unit with the card the wheel were two and a half feet feet in diameter can you see that round and were similar to chariot wheel remember in in a in a Ezekiel, when we talk about the chariot wheel that move around the face of the earth, also spoke, rims, and hope were all cast from the molten bronze. This guy is amazing. The work he's doing. This this uh, Horam is specially gifted. This is over three thousand years ago. We are talking about. There were there were handles at each of the four corners of the cart, and this. Two were cast as one unit with the cast. Around the top of each cut was a rim nine inches wide. The corner support and side panel were cast as one unit with the cut. Carvings of the cherubim, lion, and palm tree decorated the panels of the corner support wherever there was room and there was rate of all around. All ten water cut were the same size and were made like for each other. Was cut from the same mold. May God bless the world and help us in Jesus' name. You see, everything about you and I is special. Is special. Is special. Every part of your body they are symmetric. Look at your hands. Look at your feet. Look at all part of your body. Horam also made 10 smaller bronze basins, one for each cut. From each basin was 6 feet across, could hold 220 gallons of water. This is so much water in this temple. He also set five, he also set five water cut for the south side of the temple and five on the north side. The great bronze basin called the sea was placed near the southwest corner of the temple he also made the necessary water basin shovel and bowls so at last Horam completed everything king solomon had assigned him to make for the temple of the lord the two pillar the two bronze shaped capital on top of the pillar the two network of the interwove chain that decorated the capitals the 400 pomegranate that hung from the chain on the capital, two rows of pomegranate for each of the chain network of decorated capitals on top of the pillars. The 10 water cart holding the 10 basin, the sea and the 12 ozing underneath, the ash buckets, the shovel and the bowl. Horan made all these things of finish of banish bronze for the temple of the Lord just as King Solomon had directed and the king 
had then cast it in clay mode in the Jordan Valley between a Sukkom and Zeratan. Solomon did not weigh all these things because there were so many, the weight of the bronze could not be measured. Solomon also made the furnishings of the temple of the Lord, the gold, the the golden uh, the gold table for the bread of the present, the lampstand of the of the solid gold, five on the south and five on the north, in the front of the most holy, the flower decoration, lamps, the tongues, all of gold, the small bo- the small bowls, lamp snuffers, the bowls, le- le- ladies, <coughs> and incense uh, burner, all of the solid gold, the doors for the entrance to the holy, on the most holy place, and the main room of the temple with their front overlay with gold. So King Solomon finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. Then he brought all the gift. His father, David, had dedicated the silver, the gold, and the various articles and and stored them in the treasury of the lost temple. May God help us in Jesus' name. You see this guy? It's amazing. He did everything very precisely, meticulously, and very beautiful. Are you doing everything you are doing for God beautifully, or you are doing them haphazardly? Oh, you know what happened? I just had to do what I have to do. If it's okay, it's okay. If it's not okay, that's not my fault. No. Whatever you are doing, give God the best. And God will give you the best also. You know what I always say? It's not what you do that makes you to be successful. The other people have money, but they don't have joy. <coughs> they cannot sleep at night. The other people that have car, but they cannot drive it. <coughs> the other people that have so many things, but they cannot enjoy it. You know, everything we have is a gift from God, and we must use it for God's glory. When you do that, you are in good hand. Let people say whatever they want to say. Let them do whatever they want to do. You are in God's hand. And the God whose purpose you are serving Him will reward you mightily. You know, there's a lady, Mary, Mary, whom Jesus Christ cast out seven demons, Mary Magdalene. Now that lady was notorious. Oh boy. When you read about the girl, you say, Oh, Mary, what, a, what are you doing in the church? But it was very, when he repented, she never go back. May God help us in Jesus' name. God is not care about your past. That's what I'm trying to bring out here. God is looking at your present. Remember the children of Eli? Their father was a priest. They were born in the church. But they were horrible children. And God was never pleased with them. So I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you have done in the past. Jesus Christ did not come to save the righteous. came for the sinner. Give your life to Jesus and continue today. My goal is to inspire you to live a better life than you did yesterday. Because tomorrow is going to be a better day here or here and hereafter, which is heaven. That's our goal. When you get to heaven, God is going to say, oh, you know what happened? Five years ago, when you went to a store, you took a uh, one uh, candy. You didn't pay for it. Once you confess it, God say, I can't even remember. That's God. May God help us in Jesus' name. If you haven't known Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have not given your heart to Him, all these things I'm talking right now, they are not applicable to you because you haven't known Jesus. Because your temple is not yet built. It has no material yet. But when you give your life to Jesus, you repent of your sin, whatever you are going through, don't worry. Tomorrow will be alright. I say that all the time. Don't worry. Whatever you are going through right now, just relax. Tomorrow is going to be a better day. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Because you are hard, because you are poor to them, you are going to be poor tomorrow. Because you are sick to them, you are going to be sick tomorrow. Just give your life to God. Serve Him. Obey Him. Do His will faithfully. You'll be alright. I can show you that because I stand as Christ's representative. If Jesus Christ was on air today, he will be telling you exactly what I'm telling you right now. So that's why I call myself Jesus' representative. 
Jesus Christ will never condemn you. you never say, oh, you have sinned. Get away from here. I don't want you. But when you come to him, say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Say, my daughter, don't worry. My son, you're okay. Don't do it no more. May God help us in Jesus' name. The same thing I tell you, don't do it no more. Repent. Give your life to Jesus. Confess your sin. Take your Bible. Start reading it every day. Don't care whether you understand it. Just begin to read. The Holy Spirit will help you. And when you do that one, brothers and sisters, you're in good hands. Anybody want to fight against you, it's not fighting against your maker, your God. And your God whom you sincerely come to seek will defend you and protect you. In Jesus' name. We are going to stop here today. And uh, I want us to finish this passage. That's why we took a little bit of time. We are a few minutes past our time. But nevertheless, I guess most of us will say we enjoy this teaching today. Take time to read it for us to understand what we are doing. And I ask God to bless you and reward you. Your time in serving the Lord, your giving is something vain. I can assure you that. Your time you give to God, your money you give to God is something vain. That's what is going to count to your account in heaven. Because every other thing in this world is, is not for God. It's, they don't actually count. But what you do for God, that what is good to son. <clears throat> Whatever you do to the least of my brother, that you do unto me. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you are you do unto me. When I was hungry, me food When I was naughty, gave me food Now I eat my home of my father. Da. Brothers and sisters, whatever you do, whatever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. Whatever you do to the least of my sisters, when I was hungry, gave to me. When I say freezing, freezing, you come to me. <coughs> now enter into the home of my father. When I was naked, you gave me to wear. Now enter into the home. of my brothers and sisters that you do unto me brothers and sisters whatever list you do anything for the sake of jesus you are doing for jesus and i can show you you're going to get a reward i can show you that hundred percent i can even say two hundred percent if that possible May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we want to bless you because your word is true. We are glad that we are your temple. That you chose us to represent you on earth. That out of us, you receive the glory, the honor that is due to your name. Father, we know we may have sinned against you in many ways. That's a fact. It's irrefutable fact. That we have sinned against you by what we do, by what we say, by what we eat, by what we fail to eat or fail to do or fail to say. Father, have mercy. Remember the cross where your son died. He shed the blood for our sin, for our redemption. Father, have mercy upon us, Lord, and forgive us, Lord, in Jesus' name. All the brothers and sisters present here today, those who will hear this word by social media around the whole world, they have one need or the other. I bring all of them before you. 
Those who are sick will remember that this hour. Those who are looking for a job who don't have no job will remember that this hour. Those who are discouraged due to one problem or the other because of the economic condition will remember that this time, Lord, Father, we have no powers of our own. We commit everything unto you. You, our God, you are the one that made us. We didn't make our, we did not create ourselves. Father, be with us. Uphold us. Strengthen us. Your word says, if we serve you indeed, the disease you put upon the Egyptian will never come near us. Father, COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever is being called, is going on. Father, we want to do your will. May this disease never come near our dwelling, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for our children. At their tomb study, they are saved. Our sisters and brothers who are in the medical profession, they are saved. Our brothers and sisters who work in various professions, or even those who are at home, those who are going to work, those who are doing every kind of job, they are saved. <coughs> we cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. We say evil will never come near our dwelling. Every conspiracy, every Ahitophel spirit, every witch council chamber, wherever they have mentioned our name, Father, will turn their cancer to foolishness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, by the authority invested in me by Jesus Christ as your representative, I bless these brothers and sisters, this family, these partners. I say, brothers and sisters, you are blessed. Mm -hmm. Your going out is blessed. Your community is blessed. The work of your hand is blessed. Jehovah God bless you. Mm -hmm. Whosoever is against you will fall for your sake. I say my fourth mother has sake in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Sickness will never know you. Poverty will never know you. Disease will never know you. Evil will never come near, near your home in Jesus' name. As your mighty God to bless you, bless our children, bless our wives, bless our husbands, bless our brothers, bless our sisters, bless our mothers, bless all the assets who pray for them. All we promise to be pray for. Remember all of them today, Lord God of Israel, in Jesus' name. I want to pray for all our mothers, all the mothers present here today, and those who will hear this message. As your mighty God to make you a true mother, like Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Who put her shame down? You know, this lady was pregnant. He was not married. But she bared the shame. She carried this baby to maturity. And she raised this baby. That is the one we are praying to today. Mary, did you know that this your son, Jesus Christ, will become the savior of the world? Mothers, I don't know what you are going through. To be a mother is a hard work. I Jehovah God to strengthen you. I Jehovah to be with you as a mother, to reward you, to bless you with eternal life. All the labor you are doing to raise this child for Jesus, these children, I Jehovah God to reward you. To be a good wife, I Jehovah God to reward you. All your labor is not in vain. Happy Mother's Day. And may Almighty God bless you and reward you and give you eternal life, which is the most important thing of all the gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you very much.